From Chicago's CAN TV, a look at the week's events is reported in the newspapers, in the blogs, and online, and on radio and TV. This is Chicago Newsroom. And hello, hello, hello. Welcome once again to Chicago Newsroom here on CAN TV. I'm Ken Davis, welcoming you back for just another week of discussion about what Chicago means, putting Chicago in perspective. And that's what we're going to do today because today's show is big thinking. Big thinking infrastructure, big thinking business, big thinking environment. Uh, some would say environment, economy is all the same thing, right? Henry Henderson is joining us today. Henry is with the Natural Resources Defense Council. Uh, the Chicago guy for them. Really glad to have you on the program again, Thanks, Henry. Ken. You've been back, you're coming back, a victorious return to Chicago Newsroom. And making his first appearance today is David Roeder from the Sun Times, a business writer, uh, just a guy whose work I've admired for a real long time. Thank you, Ken. Good to, be, good to be here. So um, we should begin the program today with uh, what appears to be some quote unquote breaking news, news that has broken of all places in the New York Times that. Uh, Virtually, almost as we are on the air here uh, or taping this program today, Mayor Emanuel is holding a major press announcement that he's going to spend $7 billion on infrastructure. We talked about this a few weeks ago. This was the, the Clinton initiative. Clinton is involved in this. But uh, now it looks like they have at least some details that it could be a billion for the CTA, a billion for expansion of O'Hare, a billion for new sewer pipes, and on and on and on. More money than has ever been spent at one time, I believe, probably in the city's history. So, Henry, uh, you were Chicago's first environment commissioner in, in a former life. You've, you've been a city official for quite some time. Put this into some perspective for us. What, what's this about? What's going to happen here? Well, I think it's, a, it's a, a critical thing about the sustainability of our communities that we cannot simply go ahead thinking that marginal management of failing infrastructure is adequate for the future of this city or the future of the United States. And the need to rebuild, reestablish, and reinvent the critical infrastructure we depend upon for our public health and safety and for the economy is absolutely critical. Um, and we've seen on the federal level a real shrinking away from that and a politicization I've of investment yeah. of, in, in what actually makes America work. Um, and so you have the city stepping forward, as cities often have, in terms of being um, the, the, the source of uh, quality of life, mm -hmm. and the city of Chicago stepping forward in this instance and looking at how critical infrastructure from moving people to managing waste to getting water to people uh, where they where where they are, and to uh, put the city within and to remove a that water to remove safely. the water when it's you know when mm -hmm. it's uh, when it's 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 dirty. Uh, the existing infrastructure is inadequate to move us in the 21st century, and this is a significant effort to redress that on uh, on a local level in one of the great cities in North America. All right, well, David, let's 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 turn to the crusty journalist here. Uh, first of all, do you have any reaction? We spend a lot of time on this program talking about the news business and about journalism. And remember, you're crusty. Yeah, yes, I'm, yeah. I'm crusty today. Yeah. Okay. okay. Do you <coughs> remember? Do, do you have any reaction as sh as the business reporter for the Chicago Sun Times to having this story dropped in the New York Times the night before? I, I can understand why the mayor uh, did it. Uh, he was looking for a uh, receptive uh, audience, whereas sometimes uh, uh, big initiatives like this, we're, we're kind of uh, used to announcements that. That don't go anywhere sometimes. Yeah, this is uh, if this is significant, but uh, but the city always has you know kind of a long term uh, public works plan that they lay out. This is kind of a packaging of uh, of a lot of what the mayor has talked about uh, before, mm -hmm. and uh, probably some carryover ideas from the uh, the daily administration mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. as well. But having s said that, it it is important to uh, to lay all of this stuff out and to talk about. Uh, the, the financing mechanism uh, that uh, Mayor Emanuel has uh, uh, suggested, which is this infrastructure trust, which I think a lot of people are still trying to get their, their mind around the, uh, the, the details of, yeah. uh, of that, yeah. where you have uh, you know, private interests uh, in, in the background as kind of uh, you know, passive investors in, in different projects. Uh, what I uh, have been trying to understand is how, how is that different, how is that better from you know the old model of just 
you know, selling bonds to the J.P. Morgans and the Morgan mm -hmm. Stanleys of the world, and uh, you know, paying for your projects that way. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, some of these uh, details, uh, you know, still have to be worked out, and also accountability for all of this. Uh, you know, how how is this being yeah. spent? Right. Uh, what it's being spent on? You know, these are all questions uh, that are ongoing. I know you and, and, and certainly others, we've had Hal Dardick on the show here from the Tribune uh, talking about how, you know, one of, the, one of the real unanswered questions about this is that there will be some kind of oversight entity, committee, mm -hmm. whatever it is, but it's not an actual government entity. It's not the city council. Mm -hmm. So much of this could, now we, we don't know what, well, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm the first to admit it, but it appears that, that some of this stuff will be taken away from the jurisdiction of the city council so that your elected representative might not have as much of a say about it. Theoretically, this could go off the books. Uh, and we've already seen uh, with uh, TIF funding, tax increment financing mm -hmm. districts, how that became kind of a mad money pot that was uh, right. you know, separate from uh, the regular but city. But that's budget. just this pocket change a, compared to this. That's uh, that, that's a small <laughs> amount, yeah, compared yeah. to this. Exactly. If this is if this is true, <clears throat> yeah. and there really is seven billion dollars in con contracts, Henry, contracts mm -hmm. always a good thing to have, right? If you're running the city. Well, well, business cannot be done around, without you know? contracts. I mean, I, and and there's no. I, I think I think degrees of accountability are are absolutely critical in understanding how this will work and how it gets in, in, invested. Um, and the structure of it is going to be an, an important thing for public discussion. Yeah. I, think, I think Mayor Emanuel has had a, a, a long history of being interested in, 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 in trust structures in order to assure long-term funding. Mm -hmm. I, I think one of the concerns is how do you, how do you create a, a, an ongoing pot of money to invest at the levels that are necessary in order to do what is necessary to redefine and reinvent Critical investments. Mm -hmm. um, so, so there. Th how do you take the need for what is really a huge investment that makes life and business better within within this region, have certainty to it, um, and having things just subject to a series of, 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 of political waves that you're not able to plan over the long term mm. undercuts mm -hmm. the ability to do sustained investment yeah, in infrastructure. Yeah, yeah. A very I mean, he, he, he looked at this uh, when he was a congressman with regard to a trust fund for the Great Lakes, mm -hmm. which is much more commensurate with the kind of uh, uh, certainty of long-term investment planning and, mm -hmm. and follow-through that's necessary for the big, big works um, that I are necessary that's, for us. that's an excellent point. So, I mean, so there, there are reasons to do this. Yeah. There are also reasons for an informed and free citizenry to have degrees of, enga of engagement and skepticism about right. what's being done. Right. I mean, I look, at, I look at a critical piece of the infrastructure of this region, and it has to do with the sewers. We have these really aging, failing sewers. They need to be reinvested in. We have a problem in this city in terms of a filthy river, which is essentially an open sewer. Uh, we have flooded basements. We have flooded streets, things that undercut quality of life and endanger public health and safety. How are we going to fix that? Uh, this is a way to put in place funding over the long term to make that happen. But what is the input? the public and experts need in order to assure that these investments actually pay off over the long term. Which means how is it what you're what you're getting at is is how is it going to be done? What yeah. what construction methods governance, are going to be used? Governance structure is absolutely critical in assuring the certainty of the investment that actually pays over the long term and actually <coughs> brings in a range of things that uh, make our life better. The sewers bo and, and the water infrastructure is one of the largest costs on energy in the city of Chicago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Huge cost, yeah. and it's an operating expense. Replacing failing infrastructure is critical for getting a handle on that. But there are new ways to do this in terms of cutting down radically upon the cost of the moving of fluids, both dirty and clean, uh, that could have a major impact in terms of the sustainability of public money, health and safety, et cetera. So those are the kinds of things you know, that go into the details. I, I think uh, it's, it's nice to, uh, to have uh, ideas like this out there because not too long ago, this city got a wake-up call. Uh, the wake-up call was that we lost population in the last census. Yeah. 
And a lot of people had no idea that was coming because, oh, they looked downtown, saw the condo buildings, mm -hmm. they saw everything going mm -hmm. up in Lincoln Park, Ravenswood. Um, but so much of this city has been lost. I, I, I've, I've called it like the forlorn 40% of yeah, the neighborhoods yeah, yeah. where there is no investment, there is just nothing going on, right. and now the, the, the housing crisis has just, you know, uh, hit everything. Well, Lee Bay has as written well. some eloquent stuff about that, about about riding <coughs> the you know riding the, the the train and and riding past just acres and acres, exactly. hundreds, thousands of acres of just empty uh, land in you've, Chicago. You've you've got available land in this city, massive amounts of available land uh, that could be used productively. If you go ahead with the public works spending, uh, that's important. It's a, it's a sign to mm -hmm. uh, to the private sector. When you're you're working on your schools, your your parks, et cetera, mm -hmm. it's a it's a quality of life issue that makes Chicago a better place to invest, and it's you know it's just something that uh, that has to be done. There's there's just so many large sections of this city that missed out on on the housing boom, uh, missed out on, on growth and on in mm -hmm. employment mm -hmm. and in jobs. Mm -hmm. you know. And there's no real indication that they would benefit. L Significantly from this seven billion dollars, either I don't know. I mean, because it, it, a lot of it. Well, that's not, maybe no, that's not true. It's maybe neither an indication or non-indication. If, 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 if a billion dollars, for example, goes into the CTA, that will help well, the whole. Well, you look. City. You, look, you look at where leadership in the city is absolutely needed. I mean, you've got this insanity in the federal Congress of a transportation bill that mm -hmm. uh, is so punitive with regard to how people actually live Absolutely. and where their interests are, and mm -hmm. a defunding of what actually moves people to and from work in ways that are reliable and economical, mm -hmm. and that somehow this is an acceptable thing coming out of Congress, uh, so much so that it spurred a bipartisan revolt in the Chicago area where Republicans and Democrats in Congress said, we cannot, you know, there's some sandwiches we simply won't eat because of the content, <laughs> okay? And I think that's, that's, that's good, and you've got, you know, a lining up of, look, we've got to get real money to invest in the way we live, and it, it's part of what has to turn around in terms of a sickness mm -hmm. that grips this country, mm -hmm. that somehow government is the enemy of the people, right. okay? That may be true in a certain number of totalitarian states, et cetera, et cetera, but the fact is we would have no transportation. We would have no water system. We would have all these things that are critical to our health, safety, welfare, and economy that are essential for the government to be part of. And this is stepping up to say, let's make this happen. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, if anyone has seen more than one or two of our shows, you'll know that, that I rail on this constantly, that, that we talk about business innovation in uh, high tech and, and you know, moder the, the modern communications field. Well, guess what? That was because the government invested much money a long time ago into the R&D that was necessary to, to essentially build the, the what we now call the internet. So, and roads. Or the and, railroads. And, and the railroads, airports, you know, that, everything. Uh, that, that horrible anti-business uh, guy, uh, Eisenhower. You yeah. Know? <laughs> and, oh, that and, guy, you know, right, right. You know, I mean, it's like, it's like yeah. an insane loss of understanding about how our communities work. Yeah how life and safety depends upon a uh, joint effort. I'm always really jealous of the time that we have. We have so little of it. And, and I want to sort of touch on some other big issues. Henry, you at the NRDC uh, and, and also at your time in environment, uh, you were a, an avowed enemy of Fisk and Crawford and uh, the uh, state line power plants. They are finally closing, uh, in fact, closing earlier than had been thought. Um, again. There is a somewhat cynical view, though, that they're not doing it out of out of public decency. They're doing it because it's just getting to be too expensive to run a coal plant. Isn't that is that, is that true? Well, you know, the business of business is business, mm -hmm. and uh, the economics of these dirty, old, fundamentally illegal plants have caught up with them. Yeah, and it's a the, the fact that these plants have been subsidized by um, people's lungs. Mm -hmm. um, they can no longer do that. And you've got the catching up of regulations, but also the reality that the alleged cheap coal is actually not, is not cheap, cheap. And they cannot yeah. afford to invest in operating safely or reliably. <clears throat> well, of course, that could lead us into another hour-long discussion about the replacement for cheap coal being <coughs> cheap gas and the cost of getting cheap gas and the cost of getting cheap oil. Uh, I, I, I want to no come back. I, I want to come back to that issue of of pipelines and the XL sure. pipeline and 
and uh, refining of uh, tar sands oil, because I know that's a, an issue you... Because my kids call it hickey popo. <laughs> yeah, something, something like that. But David, I, wanna, <clears throat> I really wanted to talk to you also because you've written about uh, a real estate downtown and, and well, r just sort of the general value of real estate in Chicago. But something I found really interesting is that high-end real estate downtown, I guess even residential as well as office, seems to be doing pretty well. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm not sure how to put that into the whole picture. You know, uh, uh, premium office space uh, is in enjoying some pretty good times. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, there might be, uh, you know, some demand for a couple of new buildings over over the next few years. Uh, people look at, at at trends in employment. They see jobs getting cut and uh, uh, e industries leaving town. And they right. ask why that is. Right. Uh, but it always seems as if uh, there's there's no end of a supply of uh, uh, office space users willing to pay uh, for that brand new modern space. You know, mm. the law firms, accounting firms, and whatnot that populate these buildings. Uh, companies, uh, you know, like the latest thing, and often when they move into this brand new space, uh, it's more efficient for them. They might actually be saving money yeah, from yeah. their old deal. Yeah. So there's uh, th there's a reason for all those towers on But it does, drive. I mean, would you agree that um, it does seem a little bit counterintuitive? I mean, you, you just like every business, including, <laughs> including your company, is a lot smaller today than it was 20 years mm -hmm. ago, and, if, and, and that's not even for the economics. It's, it's just because of the of modern communications and technology. You just don't it, need as many people. It is. It, so it is. so yeah. why do we need why do we need office space downtown? And if you look 20 years down the road, are we still are we still going to have this kind of vibrant business center, or or is it going to be something different? Well, I'd, uh, I'd certainly hope so. Uh, I, it seems that in Chicago, as opposed to some other cities, the, the center has held, uh, mm -hmm. and, and you've got you know wonderful attractions downtown that seem to be uh, really downtown's enduring advantage versus yeah. the, the yeah. suburbs. Or, or and also, it has else. to be noted, uh, as, uh, as I've said on this program many times, one of, one of the great legacies of Richard M. Daly, the infusion of young people into downtown, the expansion of the colleges on the certainly mm -hmm. the south end of the loop, <coughs> so, which just kind of keeps the whole thing alive 24 hours. The loop a day. is its own uh, campus now. Yeah, uh, yeah. Of yeah. course, that could be its own bubble economy that that could burst. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, but uh, but the office space is is going well. A lot of the the, the residential buildings that you're seeing built now are are all rentals. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, developers have found uh, that you know now that people can't qualify for for mortgages and the liar loans and all of that are mm -hmm. out, out the window. <laughs> uh, of course, that you know they they can still afford the rent. Uh, yeah. Even though <coughs> rents are pretty high, yeah. Uh, but uh, but but that's something that we've been uh, been able to ju to enjoy in the city for now, even though uh, the overall economy has has been pretty mm -hmm. uh, pretty flat. So, as an environmentalist, do you do you weigh in on this thing about about Chicago, but even just downtowns? Is it, is it a kind of a, a 19th century uh, concept that's that's just hanging on a little too long? I mean, or, or or will we always need these kind of concentrated areas with big office towers and thousands of people taking the train to come and do work that they could just as easily do at home? If, if, oh, if I could, downtowns are supposed to be environmentally friendly. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. You, you stack people up, right. uh, it has less of an overall impact. Yeah. Uh, the public yeah. transportation, that, that all works you know, for the environment. Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I mean, um, there, there are a whole range of different models for how you live and work. Um, but there's the whole reality of central metropolises that are uh, uh, environmentally sound, yeah. are important ways in which people work, et cetera. We're going through a whole lot of, in our own organization, about how people work, where they work, and what are greater efficiencies and uh, impact on energy usage and how that has a whole impact on uh, air quality, blah, mm -hmm, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, so it's a, it's, a very, it's a very rich area of developing thought. Mm -hmm. um, and we're, you know, looking at a better use of space. But the idea of continually bringing people into close proximity to work together and mm -hmm. what are ways of doing that in order to create Better thought, better thinking, better uh, better collaboration mm -hmm. is, is is critical. I think we we look at um, in the beginning of the end of the 19th and beginning of the 20th century, where a lot of creative business 
work had to do with specialization and fragmentation, mm -hmm. where you were an expert on one small thing. Uh, I think one of the realities in the 21st century is that knowledge has to be the bringing together of multiple disciplines. Hmm. And the, the, the collaborative and sort of confluence of expertise. We go after, for instance, the energy economy. And uh, how do you make a new reality for the American economy based upon a better energy system? Mm -hmm. You have to have engineers. You have to have scientists. Um, you have to have legal and economic experts. You have to come at it in a joint, a joint approach. There is no adequate single expertise. It has to be a joint confluence of effort. And I think the design of cities and the, the design of transportation systems that allow people to gather efficiently mm -hmm. and work together is essential for moving the American economy well, forward. Well, I think, I think uh, those of us who love Chicago and, and know something about its history would have to say that, that part of the reasons why Chicago seems to have remain strong during these really tumultuous last couple of decades is that it has this built infrastructure of, of public transportation, has yeah. a, it has a big airport. That and, and you know, right, right now, e with housing being as bad as it is, the real estate agents will tell you that the, the neighborhoods where the valuations are, are doing the best are the ones with good transit connections. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, expensive gas. Uh, is, is uh, you know keeping people from uh, mm -hmm. buying mm -hmm. you know way far right. out like they, uh, right. they used to right. you know or right. far from their jobs yeah not necessarily far from downtown of course but yeah. From, yeah. far from their jobs Did, are either of you bothered by the fact that we we don't seem to have the kind of big corporate presence that that I think we used to have I mean you know we we invented the hamburger, for God's sake, right? I mean, McDonald's <laughs> started here. Uh, you know, th th there's, there Last was time I checked, it was still in the region. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and that's Is true. there something yeah. other breaking? No, 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 no. no. Th I guess that's not what I'm, what I'm trying to articulate here. And is, is that, that a good thing at Benning well, Hamburger? Well, I'm just asking. That's another mm -hmm. show. Okay. That, that's, a, that's the third show. What do antibiotics have to do with that? Uh, I don't know. A uh, lot. Uh, um, men's magazines we won were week. founded <laughs> here, too. I don't, I, whatever you want to do, however you want to say it. Okay, what I'm trying to get at is it, there, there, was a, there has been a sense that we have been this kind of crucible of, of business and yeah. the creation of new kinds mm -hmm. of businesses. And today, the only thing that seems to be out there is a company that, give, that makes coupons. Yeah. I mean, no, is that, you know, is that no, that's a terrible that cynical that view? Well, it's also Transportation is, is an important thing here, which, uh, which we have to our you know, ongoing benefit. Um, the uh, you know the, the fact that uh, O'Hare is uh, so so important in the aviation industry is, mm -hmm. is a big business generator here. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the the highway and the r the rail networks mean that uh, Chicago is always going to be like a transportation oriented uh, economy. Uh, you, know, you you hear this word made fun of on commercials now logistics, mm -hmm. but logistics is big, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, shipping goods is is. Uh, uh, something that uh, we do pretty well yeah, here in the yeah, Chicago yeah, area. Yeah. That, that's a strength as well. Well, it is. Sh the Chicago area is the third largest intermodal uh, uh, center in the world, the largest in the Western Hemisphere, mm -hmm. uh, and it has to do just what you're talking about. And it, it is a legacy of government investment in uh, in in in, in uh, rail, et cetera, in the 19th century. And we have a legacy upon which we can build, and we we are sitting back in some respects of in, in the Midwest, which was the Silicon Valley the, of the 19th century, mm -hmm. um, uh, is living off of a series of legacies that we need to reorganize and move forward. And you can see points around this, like the closure of these really old plants that mm -hmm. are not productive and part of the 21st century economy what we need to replace them with in terms of greater investment in energy efficiency, where it's replacing dirty energy with clean energy. What does that mean? It isn't just like you, you, you pass a law and it happens. It's that things are manufactured, uh, jobs are created, logistics of delivering it, people installing it. You've got a whole series of trades involved in retrofitting our built environments so that they are immensely more efficient and you can replace dirty energy with clean energy that's actually created jobs. The number of jobs being created over energy efficiency within the Midwest, it, it dwarfs 
what is, it, what, is ha what, what is happening in the fossil fuel industry. We have huge opportunities for reinvention and recapturing uh, of, uh, of a leading edge. And part of what we need to do is hold our elected officials responsible for actually making it possible to move in the 21st century as opposed to clinging to the dying industries that are incumbent in industries that are not productive of new Incumbent jobs. industries that also help dirty drive coal. the agenda. Dirty coal, mm -hmm. dirty oil, whole series of things that hold Americans to a dying economy as opposed to creating something new. We have a need and an opportunity. You know, you mentioned earlier the uh, uh, the two coal-fired uh, you know, plants in in Pilsen, uh, and uh, obviously the the, the, uh, uh, the closure uh, was a, was a great victory for for that neighborhood because they've been spewing you know stuff into the city for years. But uh, as as we you know, the neighborhood celebrates the victory, uh, they got to remember the price too. I mean, uh, they're they're going to have two vacant properties with uh, not a lot of prospects for reuse right now, um, and a lot of cleanup. Yeah, and who's going to clean it up? It's probably going to be the taxpayers at some point. Well, I don't um, think that's right. Uh, I think it's much more. I think it's a much r richer series of opportunities than that. I think particularly when you look at the Fisk plant, which is dear to me in many ways. It was an absolute cutting edge investment in 1907 yes, by Sam was. Insel, yeah, yeah, and yeah. people came from the around the world to see mm -hmm. this incredible piece of uh, uh, of engineering energy and a new, a, an absolutely new way of mm -hmm. delivering and using energy. Uh, and uh, so we have these legacies that should spur us forward as opposed to, you know, slumping down in a protectionist uh, you know, swoon and sucking you, our thank thumbs. Thank you for articulating what I was stumbling around trying to get at before. It's like, where is that, where is that, uh, that, that you know, uh, that kind of Sam Insel, let's build the biggest wildest, craziest yeah. idea, what, let's, what let's Sam, build What that would thing. Sam Insel or Henry Ford or these people who invented economies out of, out of, out of their brilliance yeah, yeah. and actually you know, understood law, economics, and engineering uh, yeah, yeah. And, and created new realities that, that transform right. the lives of Americans mm -hmm. from being indistinguishable from Roman serfs <laughs> yeah, into yeah. Mm -hmm. actually being yeah, part yeah. Of, a, of a modern world yeah. and making it anew. Yeah. That's what we have the opportunity to do. And there, there's a certain amount of... Uh, 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 bad faith about the fact that we're stuck with what has been done before as opposed to moving forward. Yeah. And there are people who are inventing massive amounts of things that are capable of improving our lives. And we look at, at the Fisk plant, it has the opportunity for community engagement to actually uh, turn this into an asset. You know, I am so sorry we have to cut it off there. I, this I, is over? It, believe it or not, it is. I, I, I'm sorry. This isn't what you said we were going to talk about. I know. Th these were the things we were going to talk about. But, you know, what, what can I say? That's I don't know. That's the way the show is. You feel ill disciplined. Will you come back? <laughs> sure. Yeah, sure. Sure. Good. Absolutely. Right. We will carry this conversation on. Uh, and and it's, a, it's an interesting one at that, too. So glad you were here to, uh, to witness some of it. You have been watching Chicago Newsroom. It's a community service of Can TV. I was going to have these guys sing Zoovy Zoovy Zoo so that we could put it on the Internet and get more clicks. But uh, you can find I us in... <laughs> You can find us here on cable, but you can also watch us online at this address, the one that's down below on the screen there. Check us out here or subscribe on iTunes. I'm Ken Davis thanking you once again for joining us. We'll be right back here again next week, whether you like it or not, right on Can <laughs> TV. Thanks for watching.